to Who Wants to Be a Zillionaire? It's time for today's final question. So, for one zillion dollars, can you define what makes a mainline Legend of Zelda game a Legend of Zelda game? And remember, spin-offs like Link's Crossbow Training and Hyrule Warriors do not count. Well, you see, that's a bit of a tricky question, but... Alright, here goes. <gasps> Okay, so back in 1986, defining a Legend of Zelda game was pretty straightforward given that the quantity was only one at the time. Just a good old-fashioned 2D action-adventure game from a top-down perspective where you explore Hyrule, solve puzzles, fight monsters, complete dungeons, and save the kingdom. However, a mere 11 months later, the franchise's 2D top-down perspective ratio dropped by a staggering 50% with the release of Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link where the genre shifted into a 2D side-scrolling action-adventure game with platforming elements tossed into the mix. So between the years 1987 and 1991, if you were to tell somebody that the Zelda franchise is a side-scrolling platformer, then you'd at least be half right, or possibly even correct since Zelda 2 was the most recent game. It seems crazy to make a sequel for an immensely popular game so drastically different living in a time where developers just kind of reuse the same gameplay elements to tell a new story for video game sequels these days, but back in the 80s, not everybody really knew what a video game sequel was supposed to be just yet. By far the most important element of video games back then was the gameplay, so I guess Nintendo's idea was that they already made a top-down 2D adventure game and thought it'd be redundant to essentially remake the same game again. I mean, hey, maybe Nintendo just added Zelda elements to the 2D action platformer they're already working on. After all, that is what they did for the non-Japanese version of Mario 2 anyway. Maybe Shigeru Miyamoto figured it'd be better to make a completely original Zelda 2 rather than copy and pasting the first game like they did with the Japanese Mario 2, which is easily the worst game in the franchise in my opinion. Who am I kidding? That game is the worst in the franchise, that's just a fact of life. At any rate though, Nintendo would eventually realize that you actually can make video game sequels with the exact same mechanics as the previous game without sacrificing creativity, because the next Legend of Zelda game linked to the past went back to the series' roots, forever leaving the 2D platforming Zelda genre in the rearview mirror. Most people would consider Zelda 2 to kind of be the black sheep of the franchise, making the consensus on what a Zelda game is pretty straightforward in 1991, especially with a lot more 2D Zelda games from a top-down perspective coming out afterwards. With just one measly oddball in the bunch, though, it seemed like Zelda's definition could safely settle as a top-down 2D adventure game. However, once the franchise made its debut on the 64, a third dimension was added to create an entirely separate genre for the franchise. Pretty much every 2D franchise made the jump to 3D once it was possible to do so, so it wasn't exactly a big surprise to see Zelda join the party, but it did still create an entirely different kind of Zelda experience altogether. At the time, most felt like the extra dimension was clearly superior and that the old top-down 2D style was the watered-down experience. After all, the whole idea behind portable gaming back then was that you could game on the go, but there were going to be some drawbacks. And well, Zelda games made exclusively for handhelds were always from a top-down perspective, which is why I think the classic styles always had a bit of a stigma for being lesser than after the 64. Once the Switch came along and merged handhelds and home consoles together though, I think a lot of people realize that while 3D Zelda may always be a bigger deal, the world's still always gonna need new 2D Zelda games. So, you know, there's 3D Zelda, 2D Zelda, and then one side-scrolling action-adventure platform or one-off that everybody knows damn well is the sore thumb of the franchise. Look, I know some of you are probably gonna bring up the CDI Zelda games as their own genre, and believe me, I'm willing to reach as far as it takes to add as many definitions as possible for the sake of this video, but honestly, two of the three CDI Zelda games are just kind of side-scrolling platformers, with the third being from a top-down perspective, so I don't think any of these could legally hold up in court as a new Zelda genre. So basically, there's really only two different kinds of Zelda games at this point, with one black sheep, which doesn't really seem all that complicated to find, right? Well, let's not forget that right after Ocarina of Time came Majora's Mask, which was a 3D title that even ran off of the exact same engine and mechanics as Ocarina of Time, except now it's running on a three-day time loop deal. I mean, it starts off playing exactly the same as its predecessor, albeit in a different setting, but then just as the world's about to end, you have to rewind time back to the beginning of the game with a whole lot of stuff to do before the moon crashes into the world and kills everybody. In fact, there's so much to do that it's physically impossible to wrap everything up before everybody in Termina bites the big one. But thankfully, you can always rewind from the beginning and start all over again once the time is about to expire. I mean, sure, you'll lose progress on any of the side quests you haven't finished yet, but you still get to keep any of the rewards from everything you do manage to finish, with every NPC having their own unique story arc over this three-day cycle. It's pretty awesome seeing all these different scenarios play out, and super dark considering all these people believe they're gonna die and are just kinda trying to find peace before they kick the bucket. 
And look, I know that on paper, Majora's Mask is still in the exact same genre as Ocarina of Time, but its mechanics are so unique that it could have easily been in its own standalone franchise, and nobody would have bothered calling it a Zelda knockoff or anything like that. In fact, a lot of people, including myself at first, initially rejected this game because of how different it was, but even though most people would consider this an exception for what a Zelda game really is, the fact is that it's still most definitely a Zelda game, so if we're going to define exactly what the franchise is, then the three-day time loop mechanic needs to be a part of the official definition somewhere, even if it is just an asterisk. After Majora's Mask added a new Zelda genre, though, Nintendo realized that they weren't too happy with how the Zelda genres were divided up and decided to go back to the franchise's roots. Uh, no, not those roots, or those, or... The, 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 God damn it, the 3D ones. <laughs> the next 3D game was Wind Waker. Much like Majora's Mask, fans initially hated this game when it came out for reasons I talked about in greater detail in my video about fickle Zelda fans, but the Wind Waker hate basically boiled down to an art style that aged better than 95% of games that came out in the same time period. But as for the genre itself, well, this is definitely a traditional 3D Zelda game, or... Well, I guess it was more like the first 3D Zelda game anyway, thus cementing a linear exploration-based adventure game without time loop mechanics as the standard 3D Zelda for the next few titles going forward. Despite 3D Zelda knowing its place, though, it didn't stop the above-average-sized den from trying new things with the 2D Zelda genre on their handhelds. You see, Zelda fans have always been very... well, passionate about the 3D games. We always ask for the world and spray rage here and all over the place if even one of our demands isn't met, and hell, even on the rare occasions where we are happy, it only ever lasts for like a year before we change our minds and duke all over whatever the most recent title is. For whatever reason though, the 2D games always kind of flew under the radar, and by that I don't mean that nobody liked them, just that nobody ever really expected much from them, which, in my opinion, was kind of the whole charm as a Zelda fan who just wants some classic adventures. It's kind of like having a friend who made it as a big movie star and preferring to hang out with him at the local Caldors as opposed to hanging out with him in a big city with paparazzis all over the place. And old Zelda games never really dealt with the pressure of having to be the most epic games in human history, mainly because of the perception many had of them being inherently lesser than titles. Don't believe me? Well, Port of Ocarina of Time outsold the best 2D Zelda game ever made on the 3DS, so suck it. Doesn't bother me that these games are underrated, though, because no pressure meant that Nintendo could try new ideas out, and if an idea didn't stick, then nobody really cared, because, after all, these weren't real Zelda games, supposedly. And if an idea did stick? Well, nobody really cared still, but despite the claims that these games aren't real Zelda titles, Judge Buttkiss and a jury of his peers decided in a court of law that they were, and thus a new Zelda genre was born with the Four Swords. Sure, this may be top-down 2D Zelda at its core, but now we're talking about an arcade-style multiplayer game where you solve group puzzles with actual levels for the first time ever in the franchise. This isn't even a spin-off or anything either, it's made by Nintendo themselves and is even a part of the official Zelda timeline, thus making it a bona fide release in the franchise, and yet one more genre that Zelda can claim as a dependent come tax season. As far as Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks are concerned, though, it's hard to say whether or not these qualify as being in their own genres, though. Like, yeah, they definitely stand out, but at the end of the day, they're really just top-down Zelda games with odd touch controls. Sure, they may be top-down 3D instead of 2D, but I wouldn't consider X and Y to be in a different genre of Pokemon games from Red and Blue since they're entirely the exact same experience with different looking visuals, whereas games like A Link to the Past and Twilight Princess are completely different kinds of games altogether. Basically, Phantom Hourglass and Spear Tracks are top-down Zelda games that just look a little bit differently from the other top-down Zelda games. Yes, you do control them with a little plastic twig, but A Link to the Past is in a different kind of game from the first Legend of Zelda just because the Super Nintendo had a few more buttons you could use. So, yeah, Webster might have dodged a bullet with the DS Zelda titles, but Nintendo would eventually create yet another genre with the release of Breath of the Wild. On paper, it's a 3D adventure game, but any Zelda fan with a brain would tell you that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom were completely different types of 3D Zelda games from Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword. Sure, you're still traversing Hyrule and completing dungeons before moving on to the final dungeon, but here, the entire middle part of the game is completely optional, including the story. Now you have the freedom to do as little or as much as you want in any order you want before finishing the game, which sets a much different tone from the games where the paths are set in stone. Non-linear 3D Zelda is way more about exploration, while the linear Zelda games are way more focused on puzzles and story. That's not to say that linear 3D Zeldas don't have exploration or that the non-linear games lack puzzles or story, just that the balance really does make two completely different types of games is all. I mean, of course, non-linear 3D Zelda has tons of puzzles, but they're a lot more laid back with multiple solutions. Hell, sometimes it even feels like you're cheating, but hey, sometimes real-life problems are solved with unconventional methods, after all. As much as most of us love this approach, though, there is something special about finally finding the one and only solution to a puzzle in the linear 3D games after being stuck on it for like a fort minute. Not only that, but constantly acquiring new items until the very end of the game keeps the puzzles feeling fresh all the way through, as opposed to having just about everything within the first hour and then playing for like 100 hours. 
I already know I'm gonna get a ton of flack for saying that the linear games have a lot more focus on story, but in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, you know what the end goal is right off the bat, pretty much. Sure, there's some stories involved with all the dungeons, but since you can skip them all and go right to the final boss, they're kinda glorified side quests and side stories, if you think about it. Whereas in the linear games, you have way more twists and turns from beginning to end, reminding you about the overall plot. As far as exploration in the linear 3D Zelda games go, it's definitely there, but there's not nearly as much of a sense of wonder with there being far less terrain to travel in. You pretty much know everywhere you can and can't go, while in the non-linear games you can go just about everywhere, even when it feels like you shouldn't be able to. Hell, sometimes these are the best areas to explore. Both have their own pros and cons, but regardless of which you prefer, the point is that these are entirely different kinds of games. I mean, a Breath of the Wild were made by a third party without any Zelda references whatsoever. The inspiration might be obvious, sure, but people wouldn't exactly call it a Zelda ripoff like they would if you did the exact same thing with Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword. I mean, I'd say that Tears of the Kingdoms is different from Twilight Princess as Okami is. But then, of course, there's games like Hyrule Warriors and Cadence of Hyrule, which you could count, but while Nintendo may have officially published these games, I honestly don't really count them as official mainline Zelda titles. Mainly because they were developed by third parties without much involvement from the main Zelda teams. And before you say, oh, what about Minish Cap and Oracle of Ages and Seasons being developed by Capcom? Yeah, I didn't forget about those. The main difference is that Nintendo had a lot of input with those games. I mean, the Hyrule Warriors games are even officially confirmed as being non-canon, so... I don't know, even I don't want to be that much of a dick by including these just to artificially convolute the definition that's already complicated enough to begin with. However, is having so many genres for one franchise really such a bad thing? Of course not, you butthole. It just means that Nintendo's not afraid to try new things, even with a highly successful franchise like Zelda, and I think that's why it's still relevant after all these years. No matter how good a concept is, doing the same thing over and over again is always going to get stale. Sure, sometimes trying new things and failing can be even worse, but to get the best type of entertainment possible, risks need to be taken. I'm just saying that it can get confusing when you zoom out and look at the entire landscape is all. So while The Legend of Zelda games may have six different official definitions as to what they could be, you're not going to catch my festively plum plum complaint complaining, but at the same time, it is important that we all understand the differences in the genres and lock them all up into little cages. So in conclusion, Alex, may I call you Alex? Absolutely not. Legend of Zelda games, either a top-down 2D adventure game, a 2D side-scrolling adventure platformer with RPG elements, top-down 2D arcade-style multiplayer, 3D adventure, 3D adventure with a time loop, or a non-linear sandbox 3D adventure, but not a rhythm game if Cadence of Hyrule counts, which, if you ask me, doesn't since Nintendo didn't publish it themselves. <laughs> So, am I correct? No, no, Cameron, you are not correct. Of course you're not correct. The timer went off like halfway through that cringy ass intro you were playing. What, what, what the hell were you thinking with that long ass answer, you loser? You just lost one zillion dollars, which could have been converted to a hundred thousand pesos. And not only did you drag your answer out far longer than the allotted time the Dirt Bike Network on Channel 764 allotted us, you wouldn't even have been correct to begin with. The correct answer is that Legend of Zelda games are straight up action adventure games. End of story. Oh. Is this because I didn't phrase it in the form of a question? No, it's because you didn't phrase it in the form of an answer, you piece of shit! <laughs>